Hi everyone, we're at Auckland Art Gallery today and we're doing a reopen run of a different kind because the gallery is still closed to the public. We're about to head in and talk to Kirsten Paisley, their director. Let's go. Auckland opened up after lockdown last week, but the gallery decided to stay closed. We decided that we wanted to reopen the whole building when we open and not just do a partial opening. And that meant we had a little bit of work to do before we could um, open to the public. Just getting the staff back into the building was the first step, really. Um, and that began to happen on Monday, the, the broader administration team returning. Um, even back of house, we had to, we, we, you know, we've had to redesign our offices to enable greater space between uh, staff desks, for example. So all of that's taken place. But moreover, it was about the program, and we took receipt of a major international exhibition just a few weeks before COVID hit New Zealand. And the exhibition's called Civilization Photography Now, and it's been curated by the National Museum for Contemporary and Modern Art in Korea. Uh, and it, it's, uh, it, it brings together the work of over 200 photographers um, to look at the way in which humanity inhabits the planet. It's a very contemporary exhibition and it, it, it really looks at the way in which people live, the way they work, the way in which we control and order ourselves, the systems for communication and where we're going as a species, um, how we transport ourselves and goods around the planet. So it's a really topical exhibition mm -hmm. which we felt would be hugely resonant when we reopened. So we've had to take our time with installation. It's an exhibition that spans 16 individual gallery spaces. Wow. And um, we just really wanted to take our time with installation with our install team leading up to our reopening. So we're, we're looking at opening to our members on the 11th and 12th of June and then to the public on the 13th. And the whole building will be open at that time. The second reason is a um, human resource one, which, mm. is, which is also an interesting story. Uh, Auckland Art Gallery Toyotamaki is part of a larger organisation, a council controlled organisation called Regional Facilities Auckland, RFA. And in that family, we have the Auckland Zoo, mm. um, Auckland Live, the you know, major performing arts institution of New Zealand, um, the Maritime Museum and stadiums and so on. And our friends in the performing arts have been hit perhaps the hardest, um, not being able to bring and congregate groups of people together. So what we've been looking at here at the gallery is you know, working with our colleagues in the performing arts to find meaningful work for them within the gallery. Mm. And one of the ways we've been able to do that is to, to, to undertake quite a large redeployment program where staff from the performing arts are coming to staff the front of house. Wow. And also parts of our back of house and technical aspects here at, at the gallery. So all of that has just required us to take a little bit of, mm -hmm. a little bit of time. Um, and not open on day one of um, level level two. We're really trying to preserve permanent staff, mm -hmm. so we've been able to keep our casuals on the book, but they're not they're not getting as many hours now, um, and instead we're backfilling our casual um, our casual staff with permanent employees that have got front of house experience, but in performing arts venues in right. Auckland. Um, so we, we're excited about that. There's also other skilled staff which um, we're looking to work with in the content development. We've had staff in the building through level three, mm -hmm. our essential staff that have been working on installation, um, conservation um, as well, and our security team's been here throughout. So there's <laughs> been lots of thank yous um, shared amongst um, the staff for, for those frontline people who have kept things ticking over mm -hmm. and safe. Uh, and now we're starting to see our administration staff. Look, part of our workforce um, is still thinking about the return and how it feels for them. And right. we've been fairly flexible with staff. Um, we're really interested in productivity, moreover, than where people are. <laughs> and wanting to make sure that, you know, where people need, need and want social contact, they're able to come in. And where they, they need to be um, taking perhaps smaller steps towards emerging out into the world, enabling that as well. Um, we anticipate that most 
um, most of our staff will be back in Auckland. Of course, people have gone off to uh, you know, various homes around New Zealand to be with family during lockdown. So just allowing a bit of time for people to return. Overall, though, it's been a hugely productive time mm -hmm. for the gallery. Um, it's been a time to get tasks done that you otherwise wouldn't be able to um, because you're busy delivering an active exhibition program. Um, our conservation team has been um, really effective during the lockdown period, so has our registration team. Our digital content team have been, like you <laughs> can imagine, flat out. Um, but uh, yeah, and I think it's, it's different for different people. We're all kind of taking to these adjustments at different rates, yeah. so I think that message of being kind and flexible is pretty important for an employer. We, we went into overdrive when um, <laughs> lockdown was announced uh, in capturing content. We had two days to do as much content capture as we could. And we just opened an exhibition called Enchanted Worlds, Hokusai Hiroshig and the Art of Edo Japan. Absolutely beautiful mm -hmm. painting exhibition. So we just had two weeks of opening. So we spent the two days from when the Prime Minister announced uh, Level 4 was coming into effect. Um, we brought in a film crew um, and some um, uh, a company called Postmag. They filmed the entire exhibition and the exhibition spaces and built for us over the four weeks that followed a virtual reality exhibition where you can zoom into each work um, and see in great detail the artworks that you were otherwise closed and in <laughs> darkness. <laughs> um, it's our first ever virtual reality exhibition that we've produced and we're about to release version one, uh, this version two, which includes full Tureo translations as wow. well. And we think possibly it's the first time the Edo period Japanese art's been translated into Tureo, so we're really excited about that as well. And it's been, uh, it's been really well taken up, mm -hmm. we launched last week. And that will also carry us forward just this extra two weeks that we're taking before we, we reopen mm -hmm. to the public as well. Then a lot of content on our social media channels as well. You know, we've tried to use as much as possible um, the staff to tell the stories of the gallery. Um, our gallery assistants engaged in a, um, a program of talking about their favourite art. Content makers within an art museum are increasingly, during this moment, you know, some of our most important assets to activate work with, you know, they're the storytellers. So, you know, when your building's closed, it, it's the storytellers that you kind of really dependent on mm -hmm. to um, bring an institution alive and, and to keep it that way in people's minds. Now thinking about reopening, I'm sure there are a lot of operational considerations. We are reviewing everything and we, we don't, you know, we, I think the worst thing you can be is tone deaf to the moment. Um, we've reviewed our entire exhibition program firstly, so just before lockdown we'd announced five major international exhibitions, including Monet and Picasso and some other really big blockbuster exhibitions. Um, we, we do, we have need to rethink our program obviously, but just because of the logistics of border control, but also because of the budget constraints mm. that we're all kind of experiencing through lost revenues. The gallery here will be free to the public, so we, we won't be charging international tourists, given there are very few in the city anyway mm. at the moment. Um, and we're also reviewing our pricing structure around major exhibitions. Our online uh, commercial offer's been very strong, so that's been in incredible to see, and we've been able to quadruple the amount of product from our gift shop that we're, we're selling um, online, so that's been, that's been helpful. Um, logistics, yes, you'll have to register on arrival. At the moment, we're not bringing in time ticketing for general public, um, although we may on our members' day, because we expect to be quite busy. Um, there's a registration app where you register on your phone on arrival at, in the gallery. Um, and as long as we're able to ensure that there is safe distance between visitors mm -hmm. here, um, there'll be no restriction um, uh, otherwise, you know, in terms of volume control. So uh, we've got a, a number on each of our physical spaces. Mm -hmm. um, we know how many people we can accommodate in this room safely. And so we'll be monitoring it like, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but in every other respect, um, you know, you'll have a beautiful viewing experience here at the gallery. It's, uh, it's you know, we've upped our cleaning regimes. 
um, it, it won't be crowded. Um, we'll be managing volume and through you know throughput through our spaces like that. Mm -hmm. Most people spend around two hours in the building, uh, and we've got it's a three floor, four floor actually, four floor including our mezzanine um, building. So there's plenty of spaces to get lost in, um, and I think it, it should be uh, you know reasonably manageable. Mm -hmm. um, we can accommodate you know uh, around 400 people at a time. Mm -hmm with real comfort of space around them, um, just such as the volume in, in, in the gallery. So that's, that's feeling good and uh, we can't wait. You know, it's a missing piece of being here is the public. Mm. Um, so we, we're really looking forward to, to reopening. Mm. Mm. And sharing the, the new exhibitions as well with, with people. Yes, they do sound very exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a really fantastic cafe upstairs, one of my favourites. Uh, are there any uh, considerations that uh, you're taking there with the cafe? Well, we've had to, like all food and beverage retail operations, re-lay out the tables and, you know, make sure that there's a suitable amount of space. We're also looking at putting some um, additional seating and possibly patio heating and the like in our t beautiful garden terraces mm. to make them more inhabitable through the colder months. Um, so there's a bit more space for food and beverage, um, you know, on the footprint of the, of the gallery during people's mm. visit. They will reopen with the gallery on the 13th of June. Do blockbuster exhibitions have a life post-COVID? It's an interesting question. I think definitively the answer is yes, but the industry is going to take some time to adjust. Uh, we've got partner institutions, you know, in, in, in France and London and America that we've been in regular contact with. Uh, and it's been a really interesting opportunity for directors around the world to actually really deepen their relationships. Conversations that we thought we could only have in person and negotiations that you had to be in the country to, um, and eyeballing someone to, to, to undertake, have actually been happening from our lounge rooms. And in my case, from my wardrobe, because that's <laughs> where the best Wi-Fi is. So. <laughs> <laughs> in my home. So it, you, you kind of have this really interesting opportunity to develop a much deeper relationship with your peers and colleagues. Mm. The sense across the industry is that the blockbuster is a really critical way in which we draw audiences and new audiences to an institution and, and, it, and it will continue to have a lifeblood, you know, a, a life beyond COVID. For us, we, we're just launching a, a, a second international exhibition for the year. And, and at the same time though, we've had to postpone and cancel um, two major exhibitions being um, Monet and the Great Impressionist mm -hmm. from the Marmaton in Paris and also um, Picasso figures from the Picasso Museum in Paris, uh, both which were slated for this year. However, we're proceeding with our major exhibition um, with the Prada Foundation. The Foundation Prada is a major contemporary collecting institution and um, we've been working with them for the last year on an exhibition which is due to open in November mm -hmm. this year. So there, there is still a sense that once borders open up we'll, we'll be able to progress. It is making us think a bit differently about career travel mm -hmm. um, and, and shows that require um, large volumes of career travel um, are a little bit tricky in the meantime because of the quarantine requirements. Um, and so we're navigating some of those kind of logistical questions now. Moving into 21, 22, we are currently engaging in conversations around major touring exhibitions with international partners. And so it's still very much alive. Um, I think, you know, the, the throughput of, you know, crowded exhibitions with, you know, literally hundreds of thousands of people kind of coming through, um, over you know a several week period, that's going to look a little bit different. We're going to need to be much more careful on the timing of visitation, um, but ultimately that leads to a much better visitor experience. Mm. It's always you know beautiful luxury to be in a space like this, um, you know, not sharing it with mm. anyone. So I think opening hours, we'll have to be looking a little bit at that time ticket visitation. Um, and also I think in the short term, exhibition, international exhibition projects that are more moderate in, in budget requirement. 
Um, does an exhibition need 120 masterpieces or does it need 40? Mm. You know, those kinds of considerations will start to come into play around um, collections. But moreover, how we activate our own collections in the context of others, I think, will become a key focus in, in, in the development of international exhibition mm. making. You hang on to the bits that work, don't yes. you? Yes. Yeah. What a treat that was. What a fantastic way to start the morning. I can't wait to go back next month and visit the Auckland Art Gallery in action once more.